and an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. The angel said to them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will come to all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom God favors. Merry Christmas. Christmas. What a joy to be gathered together in worship on this beautiful night. If we've not had a chance to meet before, I'm Pastor Gary Sandberg. Privileged to serve here alongside Pastor Nate Preisinger, our pastoral intern Rita Argus, and our director of pastoral care, Janet Mortensen. On behalf of us and the entire Bethany team, what a joy and so glad that you chose to make this part of Bethany a part of your Christmas celebrations tonight. 
Just a word of welcome to all who are joining on the live stream this evening. And know that uh, the, the words of almost all the liturgy will appear right for you on the screen, but you can also download a bulletin if you'd like to do that and print it for you. If you're here in the sanctuary, we'll simply follow along the bulletin that you have. One note about that bulletin might be, if you happen to see one on your way in and just picked it up, make sure that the cover of yours that says the hopes and fears of all the years is in green print. If you have one that looks red, you have a bulletin from our earlier worship services, and you will spend the night tapping the person next to you and saying, what's going on? So if yours happens to be red, Hold it up and an usher will bring you a green one for the 9 o'clock worship service in which you're in. Also, as a part of this worship service, you'll notice for the processional hymn and also for Silent Night, there is a verse that the choir sings alone. So when we get to that verse, of course, the choir will sing and the congregation will come back in and join after that choir verse as well. Well, we have been throughout this season of uh, Advent here at Bethany talking about hope and the way that it's come to us from many places and now we come to tonight to tonight as we hear the hopes and fears of all the years and that brings us into our christmas celebrations but we realize that as beautiful as advent is in a worship space sometimes it's a little bit hectic out in the real world and there are a lot of tasks that need to get managed as you prepare for christmas so we invite you now just to take 12, 15 seconds to breathe in, to breathe out. Let peace enter into your spirit. Let it enter into your heart. Enjoy just a moment of silence as we prepare for Christmas at Bethany. This light of hope comes to us from the field, a place thought to be dead and barren, but which God declares will bring forth new life and transformation. This light of hope come to us from the forest, where an end was actually a beginning, as God's new vision sprung forth from the stump of Jesse. This light of hope comes to us from the wilderness, a place where we see only scarcity and doubt. But God calls us instead into abundance and trust. This light of hope is found in the birth of a child, seemingly meek and lowly, but is the long-awaited Messiah Savior of us all. I invite you to stand and join in singing our opening hymn, and please face the Christ candle as it enters the worship space.
is all around us. Hope is all around us. Hope is all around us. On this night, hope comes in a child. A newborn in a stable, shepherds on a hillside. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. You may be seated. Our first reading for this Christmas Eve is the prophecy from Isaiah, chapter 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. 
For a child has been born, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. 
And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O oh Christ. <laughs> be seated. I mentioned at the beginning of worship that we have come through a wonderful Advent season where we have talked about hopes as they have come from different places and as we lit the Advent wreath we recounted some of those as well. And now as we enter into this Christmas Eve worship we talk about the fact that the hopes and fears of all the years and we realize in the midst of that that there are so many reasons to hope but we also admit that there are still reasons to be fearful that they are a part of our lives at times but first the hopes because we could look at our gospel reading and realize that we are filled with hope when we hear something like a new birth that is about to take place. We are filled with hope when we hear Mary treasuring words in her heart. We are filled with hope when angels sing to a group of shepherds. And we could go back even and recapture that prophecy from Isaiah that Anne read for us where we have the hope of light shining into darkness and realize that, that darkness can never overcome light, but light will always dispel darkness. There are so many hopes that converge on us tonight. But we also realize that sometimes along with the hopes, in fact, almost parallel to them, come some of the very fears. We might know the fear of going back to a little bit before our story of an angel appearing to Mary, telling her that she was to have a child. And then we would know that in Mary and Joseph's day, that having a child brought its own set of fears into people's lives. They had the fear of traveling to Bethlehem and what that journey must have been. And so the fears that they experienced were very real. And we know that some of those fears can actually feel like they're a part of our life today. And so as we look at the hopes and the fears of all the years, we would say, yes, we have them right here, right now. They are a part of Christmas Eve. But for the shepherds, they were hoping for fear. Because if we read in the gospel reading and we hear about an angel appearing to a group of shepherds, the most 
humblest of characters that you could find on earth, and an angel appears to them, we do not hear that the shepherds were afraid. What does the gospel tell us the shepherds were? Terrified. That's right. They were hoping for fear. Fear was way down the hill for them. They were terrified by what was happening there. And so the angel says, do not be afraid, and tells them to go to the city of David, to Bethlehem, for a Messiah has been born. And all of a sudden, that hope would come to this group of shepherds. In fact, that hope would come to everybody who from then on reads Luke's gospel, because Luke already gave a little indication of it early when he said that Mary and Joseph traveled to Bethlehem because Joseph was descended from the house and family of David. And when they would have heard that, they would have understood a hope that has been a part of their lives for the past 700 years, an expectation of when God would finally come and reveal the promise that God had made to David that somebody his, uh, from his line would rule forever. And so as people were reading Luke's gospel, they would hear about Joseph needing to go to Bethlehem, conjuring up again this prophecy from Isaiah that a child would be born for us, bringing in the prophecy from Micah that it would happen in Bethlehem. And now the shepherds are told to go and see the very Messiah who has been promised for so long. And so the, the shepherds realize in the midst of their fear, there's a little bit of, of hope, a little bit of expectation of what they might find that starts to creep in on their journey toward Bethlehem. And then when they get there, they encounter in the stable Mary and Joseph and a child lying in a manger, in an animal's feeding trough. And they realize that the fears that they had, well, they still might be the fears of what it means to encounter God, but that fear transforms itself somehow. Because the fear they experience now is just different. It sort of tells you that there's a different expression that you get about the way you encounter fear. Now you can encounter fear in the way the shepherds originally did that. And I like to think back, the way that you could see that play out is actually partly through Pastor Nate's favorite Christmas movie, Home Alone. And you would realize in that movie that there's a young boy whose family has all left and gone to Paris, and he somehow didn't make the van to the airport. And as they're on the plane, both Kevin's mom and eventually Kevin realizes he is home alone. Hence the title of the movie, that he is home alone. And when he figures it out, that he is home alone, right there on the cover of the little VCR tape that you can get, some of you still know what I'm talking about when I say that, is Kevin looking frightened, going, as he realizes that he is alone. And in the midst of that, we would realize that's exactly what probably the shepherds felt like. But then they get to Bethlehem. They get to the stable. And this fear that they had as they entered in somehow dissolves. And the way sometimes we, we talk about the fear of the Lord is not fright at all, at all but, but rather this sense of awe and wonder at the presence of God. It's like they went from to and they realize that God has done something new and old at the same time. That God has fulfilled the prophecy and done it in a way that nobody could have expected in the humbleness of a child lying in a manger. And when you encounter that kind of, that kind of the very presence 
of God? There's, there's no way to describe it except to realize that you are in awe of, of, of realizing what happens when we embrace the presence of God for our own lives. And I've had an incredible privilege being a part of Bethany Lutheran Church over these past six years and being able to experience what it feels like to be in the presence of somebody who is overcome with the presence of God in their own life. I recall being in a home there to plan a funeral service for a man who died far too young. And when I'm in that presence, the first thing that I would normally do is go in and invite the family into prayer. But before even I can do that, Joyce, the mom, turns to David, her other son, and says, David, will you pray for us? And he does. And it's this beautiful, heartfelt, prayerful conversation with God and I am in awe of the presence of God in that place. There are so many times here at Bethany where an agency who, who serves people will come to Bethany and say, can you help us out? We need, we need bags to give to people for Thanksgiving so that they can have a meal. We, we need toiletries to give to people so that they can have a, a place just to be cleaned up and, and even just brush their teeth. There are times when they just need food because they are desperately hungry and the people of Bethany just come together to take care of people's basic needs over and over again. And I am in awe of what it means when the presence of God is made known through that generosity. And there are times when people might even come to me and say, Pastor Gary, what do you need for ministry? What can we do for you? We have some finances that we want to help put to Bethany to find out what you would do with them and, and the ways that we can conduct worship and the ways that our children's ministry can grow just simply happen because people want to see the ministry here to take life and so many others. And I am in awe of what happens with people. I remember being in a house where uh, Janet Mortensen and I were visiting somebody whose disease had progressed to the point that he knew that the disease would take him away from this earth in a matter of weeks. And so after that visit, as again, I'm getting ready to pray, Wilbur says, let me pray for you. And Wilbur prays for Janet and me. And it is this beautiful prayer about the ministry that we have and the strength that he wants us to know and the very presence of God and Wilbur in his last days praying for me. And I am in awe of what the presence of God brings in those moments. And there are people who I know live in the fear of walking in to a congregation, walking in to a place like Bethany for the first time because they never know if they'll be accepted because they don't fit in that 80% of people. And, and life has told them that they may not be accepted, might even be preached against when they are here, but they walk into Bethany and they are simply welcomed in not as any kind of a token or poster child of our inclusivity, but simply who they are, fully themselves in this place. And it is together, only together, that they and we are Bethany. And I am in awe of the way that all are invited to be here. And sometimes when ministry grows and it sort of takes on a little fledgling start and starts to blossom, somebody will come to me and thank me for the privilege of being able to serve a meal here on Wednesday nights. And when Becky comes to me and talks about what it means to be a part of that process over the years and tears well in her eyes for the ministry that she has experienced, and I am in awe of what it means for the presence of God 
to enter again into someone's life. And that is Christmas Eve. This is simply one more Christmas Eve that's just a launching point for us to once again understand God's promises made known in Bethlehem of God's promises made known to us that we can carry on from this place that we realize that even in the midst of God's promises all of our fears will not be taken away but we're allowed to bring them with us. We're allowed to bring our fears right here and lay them next to the manger of the Christ child. And in that place, we are filled with wonder. In that place, we are filled with awe. Because in that place, the presence of God is once again made known. May you know the presence of God in the midst of your hopes and in the midst of your fears. May this be one more night of wonder, of mystery, and of awe for the hopes and the fears of all our years are met right here tonight. Amen. I invite you to join in singing our carol. You'll find it on page five in your worship bulletin, O Little Town of Bethlehem. I invite you to stand as we sing. Let us pray. Almighty God, you make this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence as we respond to the bidding of angels. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace with one another.
Good evening, everyone. If we haven't had the chance to meet yet, my name is Nate Preisinger. My favorite Christmas movie is Home Alone, and I serve as one of the pastors here at Bethany. Um, and I just want to take a moment. This is typically a time in our worship service on a Sunday morning when I would stand up here and tell you the announcements, the things coming up, the events happening in the week ahead. That can take a very long time if you've ever been here on a Sunday morning, so I'm not going to do that tonight. Uh, but what I do want to do is just tell you a little bit about Bethany Lutheran Church. I I have served here as pastor for three years now, and I've served other churches before that, and I've visited many churches in my day, and I just um, really love this place a lot and feel so privileged that I get to serve here, and I'm just so proud of the ministry that we do here every day. We have this phrase that we use here at Bethany where we think that our job, our calling as disciples of Jesus is to know love and show love. Our calling is to know God's love in our life, to learn more about that, to grow in our knowledge of God's love, and then to show that love to other people, to those in need in the world around us. And so our ministries are really modeled after that phrase. We have four ministry teams here at Bethany. Our faith formation and our worship team, those two really help us know God's love. Faith formation designs all sorts of educational classes and events, Bible studies for kids ages three to children age 103. There's honestly something for everyone from small groups to a podcast to other events happening all throughout the week. In fact, our Faith Formation team put up a really awesome display that's in the fellowship hall. I encourage you to check that out as you're leaving here tonight just to kind of see the abundance of ministry that they're up to. So then in addition to Faith Formation, our worship team also does a great job of helping us know the love of God in our life by designing excellent, creative, and meaningful worship services every single week. If you look at the back cover of your bulletin, it's listed there. A lot of our worship services that are just coming up in the weeks ahead, just so you're aware of all of that. Um, but as you can hopefully tell tonight, we just put a lot of time, a lot of thought, and a lot of effort into making sure that worship is meaningful and really well done each and every time. All in effort to help us know God's love better in our life. And so that all leads way then to this showing of God's love. And this is where our outreach and our hospitality teams come into play. Our outreach team connects us with a whole bunch of different organizations locally in Denver, as well as nationally and internationally. And they do a wonderful job of really building a relationship with our ministry partners so that we get to know one another and the needs that each other has, and then finding ways to continually help out, whether it's hands-on work at Habitat for Humanity or putting together care bags for Metro Caring or other events as well. Outreach is continually finding ways for us to put our faith into action. And then our final team that I've already mentioned is the hospitality team. I really hope that you have felt welcomed here tonight. Know that we are so appreciative of having people join in for worship each and every week or on Christmas Eve. But our hospitality team makes sure that there's greeters and ushers and people ready and willing to uh, welcome you and help you engage here at Bethany. In addition to Sunday morning, our hospitality team also works really hard on Wednesday nights when we have programming for people of all ages and a full meal for individuals. They help pull that off so that we can continue to provide an incredible space for people to learn and grow where folks can know God's love and show God's love in their life each and every week. So there you go, a little bit about Bethany. If you ever want to learn more, you can always find me or some other member of the pastoral staff. We'd love to continue to talk your ear out about how proud we are of this congregation. But you can also check out our website. All that information is in your bulletin. And so thank you for just giving me a chance to share all that with you. We now move into a time of offering. And I'll just say that all of this ministry is possible because of the continued generosity of the people of Bethany. All the ways you can give tonight are appearing there on your illustrator. They're also printed in your bulletin. And note that there will be baskets as you exit the worship space tonight. If you have a paper offering, you can just leave it in there. But we take time in the middle of worship for offering because we believe that our life of generosity is intimately connected with our life of faith. And so we invite you now uh, to make an offering to Bethany or to another God-pleasing ministry and really worship God through this act of generosity. And as we take time for that, our chancel choir shares with us the gift of music.
we gather together now for the ancient Christian practice of Holy Communion. Please know that everyone who's gathered here for worship tonight or joining us together on the live stream, all of you are invited to participate in communion this evening. This is not only an invitation from Bethany Lutheran Church, but we believe that this is an invitation from Jesus Christ himself. If you will be spiritually nourished by this meal, please come and be fed at Christ's table tonight. The entire order for our communion liturgy this evening is printed in your bulletin on page 6. I invite you to stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It was in the night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. It is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Christ took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you. It is shed for all people, for the forgiveness of your sin. Do this in the remembrance of me. Remembering then Christ's death and resurrection, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. You may be seated. All of the instructions for communion tonight about distribution are printed in your bulletin at the bottom of page 6. Just so you are aware, an usher will be coming forward to dismiss you by rows. You can then come forward and make your way to one of the communion servers who will be positioned in front of each of the seating areas. Oftentimes there will be two servers, so just make your way to the one that's available when you get to the front of the line. You'll receive from that communion server a wafer. Hold on to that wafer and then dip it in the wine chalice that's also included there, thereby receiving the body and blood of Christ. Please note that if you require a gluten-free option or an alcohol-free option, or if you're just more comfortable with a pre-packaged communion kit, those will also be available on small tables in the front of each seating area. The gluten-free options are in their own separate basket. You really can't miss it. And then the silver tray includes the pre-packaged uh, alcohol-free options for you. One final note, as if that wasn't enough. Also, just be sure to grab a candle as you head back from communion as we prepare to sing Silent Night together. But now, friends, hear these words of invitation to the table. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready. Sweet to 
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Well, friends, it is time for that sacred Christmas Eve moment when we will dim the lights and light candles as we sing Silent Night together. Our ushers are coming forward now to have their candles lit and note that they will be dispersing throughout the space and lighting the candles of those who are on the ends of rows. So if you sat on the end of a row, congratulations. You are now in charge of making sure that the other people in your rows get their candles lit. Just a word about strategy as it goes with lighting candles. It is best, we found, to keep the lit candle upright and to have the unlit candle dip into the lit one because if you do it in reverse, someone gets a lap full of wax for Christmas and no one wants that. Uh, please note also that they will be dispersing. We'll start singing Silent Night just as soon as everyone's candles are lit, but then immediately following the conclusion of Silent Night, the lights will come up and we'll continue singing the first Noel, which is on the next page in your bulletin. But I invite you to stand now at this time as we prepare to sing together.
And now, receive the night's blessing. As you go on your way, may God go with you. May God go before you to show you the way, above you to watch over you, beside you to be your friend, and may God be within you to give you peace, this night and always, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join now in singing our sending hymn, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. in peace we welcome the Christ child. Thanks be to God. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas.